What's going on, fellas? This video is for Juan, and we're just talking about ozone today. The new transformer's in, and I wanted to show that this thing is indeed a beast. This is about uh, $1,500 worth of equipment right here and just the electronics. I bought this from a company in China, and it is a very powerful piece of equipment. Let's kind of show you what this thing's got going on here. Definitely a monster. This is a DC transformer as far as I know. I'm only saying that because typically the AC have two red wires coming off of them. And what I have here is a sample electrode to kind of give a visual of what type of corona discharge this thing puts off. Now, the first ozone generator I built for you, Juan, is this type here, which is the screen type. These can be very effective with high flow if you cool the flow. But um, this here, I would imagine, is going to put off a lot more ozone because we've got a dual gap configuration here. And this is the actual ozone generator itself that I built for you. And the purpose behind a lot of the construction you're seeing here was so you guys could easily replicate this on your end so that you could build them there out of very easy to get a hold of parts. Um, anything that needs cut out on the plasma table, I could do that for you. You can see here we have some uh, dielectric brackets there holding that glass tube in place. And it just uses a hose clamp, clamp to this tube, kind of like what you see here, to hold them in place. As I said, I did that to make this as easy on you guys as possible for construction, so that, because we're gonna need to build a whole array of these things. This is just a single cell of a multi-cell unit. But this is a dual cooled water jacket. You have the exterior water jacket and also the interior electrode which you can see here will also have coolant running through it. We're going to want to get this thing down to below zero temperatures. We're going to want to use an antifreeze of some type for the circulation fluid. And we are going to want to keep this thing as cold as possible. Heat kills ozone. So we don't want the generator being allowed to get hot. So let's go ahead and take a look at this sample electrode so you guys can get a look at the discharge. Okay, Juan, one very important feature about ozone generator design is something called resonance. Every cell that you build, the size, the surface area of that corona discharge is going to have a specific resonance frequency that's going to match these electronics according to the frequency you have set up. So to find the resonance frequency, you have two options. You can examine it visually, and you can obviously see with your eyes what is the hottest corona or you can observe the amperage draw on the system looking at the watts doesn't really do it for you you don't get a very good enough representation so you want to be on the amperage if you cannot see the corona discharge inside the system the more amps you're drawing the more corona discharge you have so I'm going to turn the lights off and plug this thing in and we'll kind of play with the frequency here and we'll look at what resonance is all about because that's one of the most important features of an ozone generator power supply. If you are unable to modulate the frequency, what you then have to do is match the size of your electrodes to the resonance frequency of the power supply. So we may be able to cut this thing in half and find that it resonates quite well at a set frequency. And then we would just have to make hundreds of those units. But because we can go from 2 kilohertz to 9 kilohertz on this, we have a little bit of play. It does appear as if we went lower than 2 kilohertz. It would be beneficial for this specific test module. I'm going to shut up. Let's just look at it. It's plugged in. And there it goes. I'm going to turn all the lights off here so we can get a really good look at that. Beautiful Corona discharge on this thing. Check that out. I'm not going to be able to run this for very long at all, guys. The ozone stench is just quite powerful.
as you can see, we have Coronas running all through there. Okay, so, I haven't even adjusted it yet. Let's adjust it here. Okay, that's about full power right there. I'm going to take this out of resonance so you can see what it looks like. And that right there is out of resonance. I'm going to adjust the frequency again until we get our hottest Corona. So it looks like about 2200 hertz or so. We're at about 0.72 amps there. And this is at 230 some volts. So, yeah, the input voltage is fairly high. Well, actually it's not for 240. It's supposed to be 220 in here though. Um, the wattage, we're at about 109 watts, which isn't a whole heck of a lot. But as you can see, we are all the way through this. It's putting off quite the wine. Okay, Juan, so that was just to kind of show you the double Corona feature that we have going on there. So the actual surface of this electrode is a lot bigger than one would believe just at an initial glance. So I'm going to get this thing out of the way, and we are going to hook this bad boy up for an initial test run. If I can get some light in there for you. You kind of see those dielectric brackets there. So this thing ought to scream. I wanted to go ahead and hook up this other ozone electrode so we could take a look at this thing just to see how this power supply can run one of these um, screen units because they work quite well. We have a screen on the inside and on the outside. Plug it in. It's actually pulling more amperage than the other one was. So I'm going to mess with the frequency here. Wow! I tell you what, Juan. This thing is stinking the place up. We're pulling more current with this type of electrode. Crazy, dude. Man, I don't know, Juan. Okay, that's on maximum frequency. I don't like that at all. The way this is looking, if I could go lower, that's the lowest frequency I've got. It's acting as if I could reduce the frequency down to about a thousand hertz, we would get even more production. Yeah. This electrode is pulling more current than that test electrode we've just seen. But that makes sense because after all, look at the size. It is a little bit bigger, this one is, in surface area. Just a little bit. It's probably hot. That's the one bad thing about this design, Juan. You got to have a huge airflow going over them with the recirculation system. You got to have one of those, um, what do they call those, regenerative, uh, regenerative blowers that can handle ozone. Yeah, that's very hot to the touch. All right, let's shut up. Let's hook this thing up now. Okay, Juan, well, as I said, we're just using hose clamps to secure the electrodes for now. I felt that would be the simplest, cheapest way to reproduce. If we got to make a hundred of these things, you really got to start thinking like that. Okay, I'm going to plug this bad boy in. Okay, it's pulling more amperage than the other one, which is good. But we're probably not resonating. Okay, I can't see much. Okay, don't like that. So right around here is the resonance frequency. I'm just kind of modulating the potentiometer here. 
to see if we can get more out of it. I bet it's going to start dropping off here. Yep. So see, that's the importance. This one doesn't really... All you can see in this one is the glass lighting up. That's just the ring of glass there. I don't have a way to actually get us down inside there to see this one, guys. I can tell you this. The ozone coming out of this thing is tremendous. That stinks bad, guys. This one stinks worse than that did. Oh, man. I'm getting out of here. Okay, so that is... That's 120 watts, Juan. I also forgot to point out, Juan, this is the power cord for the cooling fan on the transformer. And that plugs in right there. We don't need that for this test. And it's probably kind of loud. This thing ain't getting nowhere near hot. This is a 5,000 watt transformer. That didn't really get us a good shot at that, did I, guys? Quite a beefy component. Um, that can be submerged in an oil bath if, with a bunch of these in it if we need to eventually. If it ends up being in a really hot environment. Um, there's no sense in having 100 degree air blowing down on your transformer. So if your ambient surroundings is in the 100 degree temperature, we really might want to start thinking about some type of air conditioned cabinet or oil bath. So that way you can just kind of sometimes you can just circulate the oil to a ground tank. What I'm going to do now is tighten everything up and hook the circulation system up to it. And then we're going to hook the oxygen concentrator up to it. And um, we'll do another food coloring test where we uh, take a jar and pump the ozone into it. I don't have any other ozone testing equipment. I'm actually going to do that in a separate video, Juan. I just wanted to get something out to you to let you know that the cell is done. It is not going to break on us. This thing is, I've got the gap to where we're not, we don't have lightning bolts that are super big. The first gap we were going with was this smaller tube here. It's got a smaller wall thickness. And these outer sparks were just a little bit too violent. They were etching into the glass. I do want to let this one run for a while so we can take a look at it. I'm going to do that later. But for the most part, I'm pretty sure we're in the clear. This is some good quartz tubing. This is not glass. It's not borosilica. And um, I think we're going to be good to go with this thing. Like I said, the only problem we got right now is the fact that this is a welded tubing. You kind of see that seam right there. So, we're going to have to check that out. What we're looking at here is a seamless 304 stainless steel tubing that I have on the way. What we currently have is the welded 304 stainless. And because of that, it does not work well with compression fittings. It doesn't have a perfect surface where the weld bead is. So because of that, it only take me a couple of minutes, but I have to swap this out for a three-quarter inch seamless welded tube. Um, this here, I'll show you a clip of the weld. So it has this external seam on it, which is okay for some applications, but um, we had high hopes of using a compression fitting to seal this in. So I have another piece of seamless stainless steel three-quarter inch tubing on the way that should mitigate the seal issue. Because these have a very special compression collet. It's a two-piece system. You can see that other ring in there. And there's no way we're going to get a 50 PSI airtight fit with this weld on this tube so that piece is going to be here hopefully monday in two days or so they're usually pretty quick and we'll be able to swap this bad boy out so other than that we're good to go juan i just i did not know these compression fittings 
would not work with the welded tube. I, I learned the hard way on that. So I have another one on the way. It should be here in a day or two. And that's going to allow these special compression fittings to seal the ozone gas into the pressurized chamber. And it's also going to stop the coolant from spraying out that's passing through the electrode. Um, this hose clamp here is the ground electrode. And this right here is the high voltage side of the large red wire connection. I'm just using a hose clamp for this. As I said, I wanted to keep it as simple for you guys as possible, seeing as how we have to build quite a few of these. So, that so in conclusion, this transformer can run about 41 of these cells. And um, the reason why I didn't just use a tubing with thread on each side already has a lot to do with the fabrication process. And when you go to build one, it becomes obvious why I did this. Not only can we get a custom length, this tube's also cheaper than threaded stainless steel tubing, or stainless steel pipe, I should say. And um, the hardest part about building one of these things is making them airtight. Getting these types of welds not to leak is a bigger challenge than you think. You can see here, guys, why I didn't just use threaded pipe. I would never have been able to get this weld deep down inside enough where I wouldn't have damaged the threads because the threads are very easily damaged. But look at that leak in that weld. Very hard to, to get these leaks out. It really is hard making airtight welds. I'm, I'm learning uh, what to do and what not to do. You definitely want a TIG welder for sure. Um, MIG welder just ain't no good for... Uh, airtight leaks or airtight seals good for structural but so in the next video i'm going to have this thing hooked up to a water supply and an oxygen concentrator like i said i just wanted to get this out to you so you know that something has happened it's been so long we've been waiting so long for this power supply and it finally got here and i would run these things inside a deep freezer at sub-zero temperatures um, even with the coolant passing through them, I would have the whole room cooled and everything because Heat is essentially wasting your money um, You might want to do a, a cost a feasibility analysis to determine how much money you're losing from the ozone Decomposing versus how much electricity it takes to cool that room down So just the thought guys, I would definitely consider making the entire ozone room be a refrigerator i would turn it into a deep freeze or maybe even just build the thing inside a deep freeze i don't know all right man sorry for making this video so long here is a section of tubing that shows what happens to the glass when the arc streamers are just too long they tend to bunch up and rather than getting a thick um corona aura you get these little spires and they say that that decreases the ozone output so by reducing the gap a little bit you can definitely avoid that these are on the outside here where the um, the larger gap was we reduced the gap by about a millimeter and that definitely shrank up those little sparks to where it's more of a, a corona mist in there there are some streamers still but not like we had with that larger gap I, I feel this could have eventually etched the glass it feels rough this is quartz i keep calling it glass this is not glass and quartz is extremely durable in these scenarios